relative uh, pronoun in English. Relative pronoun in English is who, which, or that. Now the who and the which um, might be a little bit confusing for you because they can also be interrogative. Um, who is going to the party? Um, which is the appropriate one? I can ask a question with who or which. When I ask the question with who or which, which do you prefer? These are interrogative pronouns, not relative pronouns. Without the question mark, they are relative pronouns and they're introducing relative clauses. And so the who and the which we learned as tis, t, with the accent mark. This is the interrogative pronoun in Greek. This is a third declension pronoun. As we work with who and which as the relative pronouns, we will see that they are 212 pattern. And it will be hos, a, pa, with the rough breathing and the accent. And you'll notice that that looks just like 212 endings with nothing else there. You just add the rough breathing. And sure enough, the relative pronoun is exactly that. It's the 212 endings with a rough breathing mark. Neuter, mm -hmm. singular, nominative, and accusative lack the new. Otherwise, these are the endings that we learned all the way along for the 212 endings. And so this can be a little bit challenging to see the difference between that the relative pronoun. Uh, I'm sorry, the article. You look at ha, which is the neuter relative pronoun. You look at ha, which is the uh, masculine article. You look at hey, relative pronoun. Hey without the accent, article. The article is going to have the rough breathing and no accent or an initial tau. relative pronoun is going to have the rough breathing throughout with the accent. So there again, the two that you need to be able to tell apart. On CAMS, I put up a pronoun comparison sheet for you. And uh, you want to get this and keep this nearby. It puts autos and utos next to each other so you can see them and learn to recognize the difference. It puts the article and the relative pronoun next to each other so that you have the two paradigms close together and you can compare them. That's a helpful little thing to have and keep nearby until you've uh, gotten comfortable in working with the uh, difference between relative pronoun and the article, between autos and utos. Well, let's go back to our discussion of the grammar here. Relative <coughs> pronoun introduces a relative clause. Now, a relative clause is adjectival or descriptive in nature. And uh, we've seen this little illustration before. Ben and I are walking along over here. This is me, and this is Ben. Ben is a wonderful husband and father. He's always walking around in that little Shekinah glory that follows him around. Where he <laughs> and we look over there, and uh, I say, that's my friend over there. Guys, and I say, Oh, the tall one. And I use tall as an adjective to identify which one I'm talking about. <clears throat> Sometimes, though, we will identify someone, uh, we walk a little further, and we see an outdoor cafe, and these three guys are standing near the outdoor cafe, and there's someone sitting down and eating, and got food on the table and everything there at the outdoor cafe guys are walking by and we're walking by and I say, oh, that's my pastor. And he says, I see four guys over there. Which one is your pastor? Oh, the man who is sitting down is my pastor. All right, now there I have a whole clause. Who is sitting down? I have a 
whole clause to describe this guy, to distinguish him from all the others. And so relative clauses behave adjectivally. The relative clause is something like an adjective to describe or to uh, differentiate one individual from the others that are out there. And it's using a clause in the same way that you would use an adjective. <coughs> All right, well that's helpful enough in, uh, in uh, general terms. Let's get a little bit more specific. When we are working with the relative clause, the relative pronoun is going to have an antecedent. So I might make a statement uh, such as um, the man who is sitting down is my pastor. Now, here I have the clause, who is sitting down. My main statement is the man is my pastor, but that's not enough information for you. You can't tell which guy I'm talking about just by that statement, so I have to throw in this relative clause to define it. When I look at the relative clause, I have here a verb, is sitting. I have a subject in the relative clause, and the subject is the relative pronoun. So that pronoun is going to be in the nominative case because it is the subject of the clause that it's in. And pronouns, like nouns, uh, case is determined by uh, its function in its clause. Now, I might have another sentence here. The woman whom you met yesterday is speaking tonight at church. All right. The woman, well, I know a lot of women. Which woman are you talking about? Oh, it's the woman whom you met yesterday. There's my relative clause. Has its antecedent woman. But now let's analyze this a little bit. Here's my verb in the relative clause. Here's my subject, you. You is going to be nominative. And then the verb, well, what's the object that you met? You met the woman. The woman is the object. Well, the relative pronoun represents the woman. So now this is the direct object. It's going to be in the accusative case because in its clause, it's functioning as the direct object. Now, uh, we could say the woman to whom you gave the book <coughs> is going to speak at church. To whom you gave the book. In that situation, it would be dated because it's the indirect object now, this is the point that most students have trouble with when they're working with relative pronouns, is to understand that the case of the relative pronoun is determined by its function in the relative clause. Well, where does it get its gender and number? It gets its gender and number from its antecedent. It's going to get its gender and number from its antecedent, the word that it's referring to. The relative pronoun does not modify the antecedent. The relative pronoun introduces a relative clause. The whole relative clause is going to modify the antecedent. All right? So when we speak about relative pronouns, their function is not to modify the antecedent. It's to introduce the relative clause. But within the relative clause, it's going to have a grammatical function as a Subject as a direct object, mm. indirect object, maybe the object of a preposition. Uh, and its case will be determined by its function in the relative clause. It gets its gender and number from its antecedent. Now let's analyze both of these for a moment. What's my main clause here? My main clause is the man is my pastor. Man is going to be in the nominative case because it's the subject of its clause. So it's masculine, singular, nominative, the man. My relative pronoun is also going to be masculine, singular, nominative. It's going to be masculine and singular because
because its antecedent is masculine and singular. It's going to be nominative not because the antecedent is nominative. It's going to be nominative because it is a subject in its own clause. And they both happen to be nominative because they're both the subject of their clauses. The relative pronoun is the subject of the dependent relative clause. Man is the subject of the independent main clause. Let's go to the next one and look at this one. The woman is speaking tonight at church. Woman, feminine, singular, <coughs> nominative. 